Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be talking about adding detail to an illustration. Sometimes you see in a comic book a panel that's just crawling with detail and it can be a little baffling to the uh, aspiring artist. Like, how do they get that much detail into a picture? Uh, how do they even start? You know. So what I've done here is I've drawn this picture of a uh, young woman who's uh, studying at a desk, and uh, we've got the basics of the the desk itself, the chair, the sort of back wall, and a window. But otherwise, there's no other details in this illustration, and I want to show you how we uh, how we would begin to you know create little by little a highly detailed uh, background that almost completely surrounds this uh, character. So I'm going to begin with the idea of adding a bookshelf back here. Now, um, very quickly we get into the matter of perspective, and one thing that you have to keep in mind is if you have established um, a sort of a perspective here, like the, the top of this desk, imagine, you know, if there were lines going across the top of this desk, heading over towards that windowsill, right? All of this is sort of giving you a sense of perspective. Now I'm not going to talk about you know uh, perspective a whole lot in this video. It's not the main topic, but unfortunately you kind of have to have some idea of how perspective works. So that if I draw, let's say this is a bookshelf back here, uh, and that these things are sort of parallel to one another, then uh, I can't have the top of this bookshelf go back like that, right? Because this line is up not at the same angle as this line. So basically, you just have to bear in mind that you're, you're you're looking at this and you're coming up with something at least a little bit comparable in terms of how the upper surface of this uh, bookshelf is going to be, um, insofar as it relates to the uh, surface of the top of the desk. Now, basically, my approach in adding detail is to start with the largest forms and then gradually work my way towards the tiny, creepy, crawly details. So let's say that I've, uh, you know, I've gotten a start on this bookshelf. I can go ahead and continue to um, add a little bit of the structure in terms of, say, there's a, uh, an actual, the highest visible shelf would be right here. And, you know, you know, you could sort of get the basic lines in here to give yourself some idea, but this shelf is not going to be empty. I'm going to put books there, so I'm not going to get too concerned with the, the sort of back wall there of that bookshelf. Um, I can't do this entire video <laughs> real time. Never fear, we're going to keep it moving. But I want to give you some sense of, let's say that there's a desk lamp. Uh, again, you want to keep a sense of uh, uh, of the perspective, and, and and you know there are mathematical ways of doing this, but you can see that I'm not doing this mathematically. I'm kind of eyeballing it, and coming up with this oval uh, that uh, working at it until it looks like it's resting on the surface of the uh, of the desk. Really, just kind of winging it a little bit, and you know, uh, I think depending on how obsessed you are with perspective, you can kind of get away with winging it to a large degree. Now, I'm going to create one of these almost like Pixar style uh, desk lamps. I'm going to not do the entire thing right now. I'm just going to kind of get the basics of it in place. But already we're going to come into one thing that I like to do when I'm adding detail, and that is to have things overlap. So let's say this is the top of the um, the desk lamp. I'm having it deliberately cut in front of this chair. And you're going to see this a lot over the course of this illustration, that my goal to make something look three-dimensional, to make her look like she's surrounded by objects and so forth, one of the tricks is to have objects overlap one another pop in front of other things behind it. And the more of that, within reason, <laughs> the more of that you have, the more convincing. So I'm going to erase away the top of the chair there. And that gives you the basics of it, of where this desk lamp is going to come in. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much further into detail there. Uh, as I said, starting, I want to start with the large shapes and work my way towards the smaller shapes. So let's say that there's a, a chair that is of similar height maybe we're going to see the upper reaches uh, uh, of the frame of that chair right here in the foreground. And again, you see me deliberately having it cut in front of that book. And you might say, well, that's a shame. You're, you're 
erasing away part of the drawing you did, but it's worth it in the end, the effect of three-dimensionality that comes with one object popping in front of the other. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, to make them sort of matching chairs, uh, do a similar sort of thing as I had done over here. Now, this part over here, I think, is not going to be a whole lot of fun to do real-time, but I'm going to show you how I would continue with that basic um, perspective scheme to draw the details uh, of the window itself, the sort of individual panes of glass. I'm going to do this all real-time, then I'll come back to explain uh, how I did it. Okay, so, you know, basically what I did there is I, I continued looking at this uh, perspective that was started by the surface of the desk, and you're kind of having the lines fan out a little bit so that this angle is not quite as sharp as this angle is down here. Again, kind of winging it, eyeballing it uh, as I go along. Now it's time to maybe start to uh, think about some objects that might be within view, and I thought, how about a uh, potted plant that I can just pop in here? Again, you see me, I'm not going for details at this stage. I'm going for real sort of basic forms. And, um, you know, a potted plant is uh, simple enough. But again, you have to sort of think about the uh, perspective. You know, it's interesting how much of this keeps coming back to perspective. You know, that, that down here at the bottom, we see a, a fairly wide oval. As you get higher in space, it becomes narrower until hypothetically as you went up, you would begin to see the underside of, uh, of things rather than the, the upper surface. And uh, I guess I'm realizing as I talk about this, you, you can't get out of the fact that perspective is a crucial part of uh, drawing environments. And so what I'll do is I'll link to, uh, I have a whole playlist, I'm pretty sure now, of uh, perspective videos that give you the basics of how to draw things in perspective. Um, and uh, as far as like uh, putting something on the wall, let's say that this is where the we sort of map out where the leaves are going to be in a real general way. Um, let's go ahead and have uh, how about a, uh, a a calendar, a wall calendar hanging behind her. And again, you see me deliberately putting it behind the lamp and allowing it to be partially hidden from view. But again, staying away from the details at this stage, just sort of. Uh, mapping out where different things uh, are going to go. How about a curtain over here? And uh, again, even after having gone to the trouble of uh, drawing that uh, the side of the window, I'm probably, you know, for the sake of realism, going to have this uh, curtain pretty much obliterate that line coming in front of it. So yeah, that's the basic, you know, you, you start with the large forms, you hold off on any tiny little details until later on in the process. And you can see me sort of trying to fill in uh, dead space in the illustration. Uh, one thing I always like to do is to sneak in a little plushie of Totoro. That's almost like a tradition of mine. And you can see it in a lot of my comics. Not always a plushie, but some sort of... Totoro figure. And again, I'm not going to get too much into the details, just sort of get the basics of it and save the little tiny line work until later. Um, but as you go, and once you've established these big forms, you can start to get a little more into, say, uh, drawing the, the spines of a row of books. And I'm going to just put a whole bunch of parallel lines. Maybe she's got like a set of all of the same book uh, right here let's say, and so they're all exactly the same height. But again, this line here is telling me, in a general way, the direction for the lines at the tops of those books. And I always find when I'm drawing backgrounds and stuff like this that I'm constantly checking the perspective. Coming back and saying, oh, does this line sort of agree with the other line that's been established? It's very easy to go astray and uh, the casual viewer can somehow, even without knowing the rules of perspective, they can see when something is off. Now how about if we get a little more stuff on top of the desk here, um, and keeping with my idea of one thing popping in front of another, let's say she has a, a carry-out cup of coffee here, 
I'm going to put it in front of her arm rather than having it isolated. Again, just all of this popping things in front of other things adds to the feeling of three-dimensionality and it's also covering up a little bit of her notepad. Um, and you might sometimes think, well, why are you drawing these foreground objects after you've drawn the background object? Wouldn't it be easier to start the other way around? Well, uh, I find that you got to start with the larger, most important parts of the drawing, which for me is the figure, the table, all of this stuff. And sadly, it just, as you add more details, involves erasing away. I'm going to get in here a sort of cup that's filled with uh, pencils. And again, why not have them pop in front of that book? You can see a theme emerging here. <laughs> uh, and the last thing you want to do is have something nearly pop in front of something, but not quite uh, pop in front of it. Uh, so let me think for, as an example, if I had, say, a small uh, ink well or something like this, and it came right up here to the base of the lamp and just sort of touched it almost, there's something a little awkward about that visually to put it right there. Either pull it away and separate it, or commit to it overlapping for real. And then that is going to just visually look a little more um, comfortable in the eyes of the viewer. There's something a little bit troubling about objects that line right up without actually overlapping. It's a matter of personal preference, I suppose. But I think you're getting the basics here, you know. Uh, one tricky thing is, the, uh, uh, so far I've shown everything going exactly along with the surface of the desk. I think eventually you want to have things that are pointing in different directions. And again, there are mathematical ways of achieving this uh, per, in terms of perspective. I always just end up kind of winging it with my understanding that, you know, the sides of these pages are going to trail off towards some sort of a vanishing point. Uh, over there. And, uh, you know, maybe she's got a couple of s small scraps of paper that are all pointing in slightly different directions. But you can see how we, little by little we, get, we went from a, a, a completely empty desk to a desk that's got quite a lot of stuff on it. And now I think it's probably time for me to uh, kick it into time-lapse. You're going to see me begin to add more and more sort of um, tiny little details on top of the basic things that I've put in here. Um, you may see me add, because this is looking kind of blank to me, I may add a kind of a um, plant in the corner, let's say. This is like a vase. And uh, you'll see me get into like drawing leaves that are coming out of that vase. I'll just do it in a super basic way now. But let's go ahead and kick it in a time lapse. I'm going to add a, a heck of a lot more detail throughout this entire illustration. Then I'll be back to talk about maybe adding just a touch of shading uh, before we draw this video to a close. Well, you can see it's almost kind of crawling with detail. I may have gone too far, <laughs> frankly. Uh, but I thought I'd say just a little bit about adding shade. You know, this is not really a uh, video about light and shadow, but um, it's worth saying that, you know, a, a, a drawing that has loads of detail um, can become a little bit overwhelming almost to the viewer. And um, figuring out your light source and adding shading can really help a lot in terms of allowing the um, person looking at the illustration to understand what it is they're looking at. So you can see me beginning to, you know, figure light is coming in uh, through the window here. Let's go ahead and uh, figure out where the shade, what areas are going to fall into shade. And even with some of the objects that we see here, um, giving you some sense of how I would begin to uh, start figuring out where the dark areas will be, where maybe a light is not reaching. Let's say this, for, this whole foreground chair is not getting 
uh, so much light because it's off to one side of the window. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing uh, in time lapse, adding a bit more shading all the way around. Um, but what I'm going to do is scan this into my computer and print it out, maybe tweak it, add a little bit of color. Uh, I've done this before with some of my illustrations. So as to finish it off with just a few little touches of my beloved white gouache um, to give it that more finished illustration look, even though know, it's probably going to remain kind of um, sketchy looking. Uh, in terms of the line work. I'm not, I don't intend to ink this, but uh, let's go ahead and finish off the shading in uh, time lapse. And the next time you see this, it will be printed out from the computer, uh, maybe with just a little bit of a, let's say we'll, we'll go a little more like sepia toned or give it a warmer kind of brown color if I can. And then we'll be ready to finish things off. All right, so I finished uh, the drawing. I scanned it into my computer and ta-da! This is what it looks like when it gets printed out. And uh, because I've sort of uh, heightened the contrast, I actually made it a, a, a touch darker. Uh, that is going to help when I take out my beloved white gouache and uh, add a few highlights. And uh, of course, this is yet another thing that will probably have to be done mostly in time lapse. But I always like to do this as sort of a final touch. And, um, you know, the truth is I feel like with a lot of different uh, illustrating methods, the, um, the white highlights are maybe the last thing that you add. It's sort of natural for that to uh, come in near the end of the process. So i like for you to see uh, how that works. And I hope that you found this useful. If you did, please let me know because I could certainly do more videos on topics like this. It is, you know, I love when I can sort of take the mystery out of something. Uh, and when you look at an insanely detailed illustration, you just might think, well, how do they do it? I don't get it. It seems like magic or something. But hopefully with a video like this, you begin to, uh, you know, unlock the secrets of of where the starting point is and how you get, you know, what the journey is towards that end point. In any case, I'll go ahead and finish up with my highlights uh, in um, time lapse, and then we'll be back with a few final words. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful, but you know, I never like to end a video without thanking people who have supported me by getting any of my books, like Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel uh, series. There's also The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. Getting so close to the comic book lesson uh, coming out. And, of course, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3. Super, super appreciative of anyone who supports me that way. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.